So we have talked about neural networks and activation functions, right? But here's the thing, when you try to use standard neural network on images, you run into this massive problem. Take 224 by 224 image that's smaller than your average Instagram post that's over 50,000 pixels and neural networks treat each pixel as an independent feature. So you're looking at this massive parameter count for the first layer only. It's completely inefficient. Convolution neural networks or CNN fix this by understanding something fundamental about how images actually work. Think about it. Pixels that are close to each other are way more related than pixels on the opposite side of the image. So CNNs use local connectivity, parameter sharing where the same filter looks for patterns everywhere. And they don't care if this cat is in the top corner or the bottom corner, it's still a cat. So how they are built, the architecture is actually pretty elegant. You have got convolutional layers that slide filters across your image, looking for things like edges and textures. Then pooling layers, these downsample by taking either the maximum or average value from each region, which gives you spatial invariance while shrinking the data. And finally, fully connected layers that flatten everything and connect each input to all neurons to make the final decision. What's really cool is how the learning happens. Early layers catch a simple stuff, horizontal lines, vertical edges, but as you go deeper, these combine into more complex shape than full objects. The network literally builds understanding from simple to complex. That is why your phone recognizes faces, why doctors use AI to read X-ray images to diagnose diseases. CNNs are amazing for spatial data. But what about when your data has a sequence? That's exactly where recurrent neural networks come in. So tomorrow we will dive into sequential learning.